Hi, my name's Nick Devon, Brisbane's most exhausted writer that you haven't heard of yet. And welcome to Radio Friendly, a channel and a blog that's not really radio friendly. Fuck, fuck, fuck's sake. Today I'll be giving you an introduction and a guide to Aussie prog rock. Australian metal is vast and varied and only a handful of subgenres actually gain any light. The Aussie metal and hard rock scene is littered with metalcore, hardcore, post-hardcore, emo, and other bands who try to replicate the success of bands like Amity Affliction, Parkway Drive, and I Killed the Prom Queen. But there's still a strong following, a cult following, for underground metal and hard rock. And it's in this underground scene that Aussie prog rock really flourishes. Progressive rock, sometimes called art rock, can be sort of categorised vaguely by its fusion of genres, fusion of styles and approaches to music. It was originally categorised as having long solos, lengthy albums and sort of obsession in the technique of how the musicians play their music. An obsessive dedication to technical skill. It's these fusions of genres such as metal, punk, thrash metal and ambient music as well as dedication to technique that I'll be discussing today as I introduce you to five Aussie prog rock albums. Number five is 12 Foot Ninja's Silent Machine. Formed in, formed in 2008 in Melbourne, 12 Foot Ninja consists of Nick Barker on vocals, Steve Mackay on lead guitar, Damian McKinnon on bass guitar, Shane Russell on drums, and Rowan Hayes who joined the band in 2012 on rhythm guitar. Silent Machine was their debut album in 2012, but prior to this, the band had already released a few EPs and a handful of singles and had already cemented themselves in this underground scene. Silent Machine perfectly showcases 12 Foot Ninja's eclecticism. They fuse other sounds from different genres while still sounding coherent in their own identity. The album opens with Coming For You, a heavy sort of new metal sounding track has elements of industrial metal with real glitchy synths bouncing around everywhere. Vocalist Nick Barker screams and then all of a sudden the track transitions into this Latin samba sound. There's accented piano notes that emphasize each beat and transition. And there's some funky guitar chords there playing around with the, the little uh, accented piano notes. At first it sort of catches you off guard but then it, it's a it's a real, it's a well executed mix of classic rock and experimental rock. Classic metal, a bit of early chilies, and some Mr. Bungle. They continue to fuse genres on Mother Sky, almost a heavy reggae um, alternative ska. Then it has another excellent performance, vocal performance by Nick Barker. This album does have a bit of a classic metal sound to it compared to the other albums that I'll talk about, but it's one of the most creative metal albums I've heard in a long time and ever since I first listened to this album fusing different genres like funk and Latin American style of music with that classic metal sound with the thrashing cymbals and the heavily distorted guitars. The drum production is also like massively produced on this. The drum kicks, they're so crisp, they sound so close, they almost sound like they're pumping in my eardrums. This is the perfect introduction to prog rock for, for fans of classic metal, classic, you know, Slayer or Megadeth, or for fans of just Mr. Bungle or Faith No More. 12 Foot Ninja's music will appeal to all those people. Number four, Sleep Makes Waves in today already walks tomorrow. This is Sleep Make Waves' uh, one and only EP. The band formed in 2006 in Sydney and have gone through uh, an array of different lineup changes. The EP came out in 2008, and I find that this is sort of the, the best entry point for anybody to listen to Sleep Makes Waves. They're a purely instrumental band and they fuse elements of rock and heavy metal with really beautiful ambient music. But even though they're just an instrumental band, they're able to capture emotions and moods like no other. They blend electronic and ambient music with the hard rock into this tapestry of different colours and sounds. The band play with delay on their guitars a lot to evoke um, different moods, like an opening track I will write peace on your wings and you will fly ever the world. It's pretty heavy shit for a title, but I guess the band don't really have lyrics. The track is sort of this epic journey through different emotions and moods, different genres and emotions. It starts out with very crisp bass lines against this rolling drum, drum rhythm. And then these thick distorted guitars chime in and it just sounds like your sort of atypical metal song. But then as the song continues it thins out 
and becomes very ambient in its tone. Soft guitar lines sort of pluck and these uh, electronic ambient sounds move in and out. Once What was once heavy has now become very soft and delicate. And it ultimately builds at the end where the two worlds collide and you have this what was soft and delicate has now returned and met with the heavy, the heavy sound and it just it, it fuses into this beautiful sound. The band once again play with ambient and sort of atmospheric sounds that sort of replicate a string section on the track. One day you will teach me to let go of my fears. The track crescendos and decrescendos multiple times and it sort of, sort of holds your hand through this journey through emotions that you really didn't think you'd be feeling on a track that from a band that might be mistaken as a metal band. It really makes waves then begin to show a softer side on the track. It's dark, it's cold, it's winter. It's a very minimal track in comparison to everything else on the EP. It's, it's still very beautiful though. It's chilling, but it's equal parts beautiful and heartbreaking. Sleep Makes Waves are an exciting and captivating band. I think that EP perfectly encapsulates the band's sound on six tracks. The way that they're able to fuse metal and ambient and atmospheric sounds is quite remarkable. Then of course, if you do like this EP, then go on and listen to their 2014 album, Love of Cartography. That is another highlight of their career, but I feel like the EP is sort of the great starting point with this band. Number three, we have Dead Letter Circus's self-titled EP, Dead Letter Circus. Another EP, I know, this one from local legends from Brisbane. Their EP uh, came out in 2007, and this band has also gone through a number of different lineup changes. The lineup from this original EP are no longer the band that now produced Dead Letter Circus's music. The band consists of Kim Benzie on vocals, Stuart Hill on bass, and then at the time Scott Davey was on drums and Rob Marrick on guitar. Those two would later leave the band. Dead Letter Circus are best known for their epic, multi-layered, guitar-driven tunes. They take influence from new metal and grunge, as well as uh, experimental and progressive bands like Tool and Radiohead. And they often blend sort of electronic song, they often blend electronic music into their fast-paced guitar-driven rock. It's Kim's vocals that have always been the, the draw card for me with Dead Letter Circus. His range is incredible and he can, he can just transition into this remarkable falsetto with ease. And then you, you quickly realise that when you sing these songs out loud in the car or whatever, that it's not that easy. So, I could have picked their first album um, whatever it's called, but I chose the EP because this was what got me into Dead Letter Circus. It came out in 2007, but I think I got into them a couple years after that. And tracks like The Mile, uh, Lines, and Disconnect and Apply are all classic songs that you know I want to listen to all the time if I want to listen to this band. The energy on this EP is infectious as the fast, delayed, layered guitar riffs start out with The Mile. Kim's vocals are, are powerful and Stu's bass sort of pokes his head out every now and then. It sounds very crisp and full. The drumming performances on this track and the EP alone are fantastic. Scott Davey uses every inch of the kit. So the mile then transitions into lines and that's my favourite DLC track. A layered guitar intro almost sounds like something you'd hear out of a sort of 90s new metal even kind of reminds me of Limp Bizkit to an extent but that soon fades away as the entire band sort of come back in and then Kim of course does not sound like Limp Bizkit. The, Kim's chorus that he sings is infectious and Shoes bass just accents every note and every beat and once lines is over this infectious energy just continues and disconnect and apply begins immediately. The intricate rhythms on the drums move from verse to chorus and often change and then the guitars just sort of go along for the ride following the, the intricate patterns that the drums are doing. It's fast paced and often chaotic but it is infectious. Closing track Alien, it's sort of a mesmerizing track if you zone in and listen to the intricate drumming that's happening there. The guitar riffs, they just speed up and down the neck and the bass just drones underneath. The entire EP is just an, an epic journey. They, they're they not the most prog rocky band, but they do show elements of prog rock with intricate and very technical um, performances on the drums and the guitars and the bass. And of course, Kim's vocal performance is intricate and mesmerizing. Number two, we have COGS, The New Normal. Now, there would not be prog in Australia if it wasn't for COG. They're the godfathers of prog in Australia, at least. 
The band formed in 1998 and have stayed the same. No lineup changes here, consisting of Flynn Gower on vocals, Lucius Borich on drums, and Luke Gower on bass and backing vocals. Yep, three members to COG. So when you listen to COG, just imagine there's only three guys playing this music. I often wonder how the fuck did they do this? How could three dudes produce this epic, multi-layered, technical sound? The de their debut album, The New Normal, came out in 2005. So most of the material, or many of the songs on the album at least, have been, well, were shown off live and were also released through singles and other EPs. Considering COG had already been on the scene for so long, they were formed in 1998 and their first album came out in 2004. This album perfectly encapsulates the definition of prog rock. There's a hardcore dedication to technique, as well as many of the, mo most of the songs, their lyrics have to do with sort of this new world industrialism or new world globalization, as well as cog fused genres all the time. But th this album, The New Normal, is sort of, it is a prog epic, and it starts out with real life. Rhythm switch ups and odd time signatures are prolific within cog's music and it happens a lot in real time, happens a lot in real life. There's a lot of mixed meters used on this album. Yeah, and real life being one of those songs as the verse and the chorus feel completely different, different rhythms. Lucius's drum patterns and, and intricate drum rhythms are incredible to listen to. As well as that, when you listen to, when you listen to Flynn's guitar lines, these intricate guitar lines, and he's singing over the top of it, you wonder how the fuck can you do that? And then, on, on that point, Flynn's vocals are often a point of discussion with the band. The way he articulates his vocals, his lyrics, as well as the sort of microphone effect that he has on his, on his vocals often make it hard for, to understand what he's saying, but it doesn't take away from the band's sound at all. The second track, Anarchy OK, has a ferocity to it, a real fierce sound. And once again, Lucius's drumming is incredible to listen to. It, it, when you listen to it, it's not really conventional drumming and it's very intricate and he's using different drumming patterns that you wouldn't usually hear in metal or hard rock. But then when you think about it, none of Cog's techniques are conventional and that's what makes it prog rock. The tracks are multifaceted. Um, it often feels like there's multiple songs in one and that's thanks to the, the mixed meter and, the, and the, the, the rhythm changes and the beat changes. The album culminates in the last two tracks, two epic 10 minute tracks. My favorite being the second last track, The Doors. And then there's some other stuff in brackets that I can never remember. The first half of the track is just this guitar, riddled in delay, just endlessly repeating as Flynn repeats, in time I will change. And it's a repetitive, hypnotizing mantra. The song changes halfway through with one of the most impressive drum beats I've ever heard in my life. The beat, it's crisp, it's loose, and it's, it's playing against these thick, distorted guitars, it's excellent. The whole track, The Doors, it's an incredible performance and an energetic track towards the end of it too. There would not be such a significant prog scene if it wasn't for this band, if it wasn't for COG. And then at number one, we have Carnival's Sound Awake. Arguably the most popular prog rock band in Australia, Carnival, they formed in 1998, uh, sort of stemming from a high school band. But they didn't officially release any music till 1999. The band are made up of Ian Kenny on vocals, Drew Goddard on guitar, John Stockman on bass, Mark Hosking on rhythm guitar, and Steve Judd on drums. Judd joined the band in 2004, right before their first album. Now, the band Carnival have gone through many genre changes. One of their EPs, Persona, has a very new metal, um, heavy metal sound to it. And then that would also continue on to the Marta, had more of a hard rock, heavy metal sound. And it wasn't until 2009 with Sound Awake that the band would sort of transition and embrace this progressive rock sound. Sound Awake is considered to be their magnum opus. Out of the 11 tracks on this album, I would argue that only about three of them aren't fantastic. This album takes what COG did on the new normal and sort of perfects it. Each band member, as they, put, as they play these instruments, they sound like they're on another planet. They, like they're completely involved in what they're doing, concentrated on their instrument alone, but yet playing together in this cohesive sound. Each instrument has in intricate and challenging, very technical melodies and rhythms, but Carnival make it sound harmonious. And then there's Ian Kenny, 
standing front and center on vocal. The album opens with Simple Boy and Stocky's bass. It's like a punch in the gut. It's thick and fuzzy and, and just some, some of the thickest bass sounds I've ever heard in my life. And then Kenny's vocals are delicate against this harmonious chaos that's going on in the background. And then the drumming on this album is fantastic again. Judd shows, Judd shows incredible technique as he changes rhythms on the fly almost. Uh, the track New Day is this eight minute epic. Kenny's performance, Kenny's vocal performance is a standout for me on this. This track is almost like an, it's another epic journey and I guess that's a characteristic in, in prog, but it feels like there's chapters in a book where the, shot, the song will transition from chapter to chapter and they each sound completely different, but still it belongs to the same book. It's the same song, it all sounds the same, but each chapter just sounds almost completely different to what was last. It's this constant theme that carries through their songs, even though they're changing rhythms and altering the melodies ever so slightly. It might be as simple as just a, a little change in rhythm or the introduction to a new instrument. Judd's incredible drumming is once again showcased on one of my personal favorite carnival tracks, Umbra. And then that also transitions into another personal favorite of mine, All I Know, where Kenny delivers another stellar vocal performance. The album finishes very similar to COG with two lengthy epic tracks, those two being Dead Man and Change. And both of these tracks, and even the album in general, features fantastic production. Dead Man specifically, it, show, it showcases excellent use of raw drum tracks and, and um, li almost live recording, utilizing room mics that capture the sound of the drum, whether it's on a bass mix, you can still hear this echo distant drum sound and then when you put that all together it makes the drums sound bigger than what they actually are. It's an incredible technique. Uh, there's a really interesting video about it that I'll link in the description. And then also just the layering on this track is incredible. Kenny's vocal layering's outstanding. Um, just go listen to Dead Man. And then, you know, final track, Change, I can't do this justice in the video, I'd go on for another 10 minutes, I could talk about this album for another half an hour. Just, just go listen to Change, it'll blow your mind, it's the perfect representation of Australian prog rock, I'm pretty sure there's a didgeridoo in there too. All I can say is that every member in Carnival gives their best performance on Change, they're all working together, giving their best, it's the ultimate closing track to an album, just go listen to Change, go listen to Sound Awake. It's the best prog rock album, Aussie prog rock album. Well, there you have it. Five albums to introduce you to Aussie prog rock. Go on, go listen to them. Thanks, thanks for watching the video. There's a playlist in the description to uh, a Spotify playlist with some of my favorite tracks off of these five albums. Um, go give that a listen if you want to check out these albums. Um, subscribe to the channel and follow me, my, uh, my social media links are in the description and uh, let me know if you like these sort of videos, if you like these guides to different genres and um, give me suggestions if you want to hear different stuff after the hype. Thanks for watching. Cheers.